Good afternoon. I hope you're doing well. Let's open our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 21. And our text today will be verses 1 through 13. Before I begin, I want to remind you that we are almost done with the greatest story ever told. I looked at my notes and found out that I started this series back in 2014. So it looks like it has taken me eight years to do this series. Eight years. Um, this message will be message number 227. And we have one more after this one, and I think we will be done. I want to thank you once again for being faithful all these years, uh, whether you attended ch uh, church or whether you tuned in to hear and, and watch these messages. And as I said last week, next we're going to study the book of Philippians. And I know that that will be a blessing to all of us. With that said, again, let's open our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 21. And let's begin reading verse 1. And the Bible says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast their four, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were, two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. Verse 9 says, As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, an hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Verse 13, Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and fish likewise. And verse 14, This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Let's pray that God will bless this time together. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to preach your word. Now, Lord, I ask you, please bless this time together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The setting of today's text takes place a week after the resurrection on the Sea of Tiberias. The Sea of Tiberias is the Roman name for the Sea of Galilee. It's the same body of water. Now the disciples have gone to Galilee and returned to what they knew best, which was fishing. They were fishermen. Now early the next morning, they are headed to land. 
But a voice calls to them from the shore, asking if they have caught any fish. And they are ashamed to say that they have caught nothing all night. They have worked all night and no fish. That was pretty embarrassing for professional fishermen like them. And so the voice calls back and says, well, throw your net on the right side of the boat and there you're gonna find some fish now to them this seemed pretty dumb but they do it anyway and miraculously they catch a huge number of fish and that's when they realize that the voice is the voice of Jesus not only because only Jesus could do that kind of miracle but because Jesus had done this for them before Luke tells us in Luke 5 that Jesus did a similar miracle when he began recruiting his disciples at the beginning of his ministry Jesus relationship with the disciples begins and ends with a miraculous catch of fish. Now there are several lessons to be learned from this story and this is the first one. So in the first place disobedience leads to failure. Disobedience leads to failure. The disciples had disobeyed Jesus. You see, Jesus had told them to go to Galilee back in Matthew chapter 28 after he had appeared to them from his resurrection. He said to them, well you need to leave for Galilee. Let's read Matthew chapter 28 and verse 10 where we find this. In verse 10, Matthew tells us, Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren, those his disciples, that they go into Galilee and there shall they see me. So these are specific instructions for them to go to Galilee. But now look at verse 16. Verse 16 says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain, listen, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. So Jesus had told them to go to Galilee, specifically to a mountain. And there they were supposed to wait and he was going to appear to them. So Matthew tells us, uh, that this happened, but Matthew does not tell us what happens in between. John tells us what happens before this account. And so, again, watch this. Jesus tells them, go to Galilee, go to a specific mountain, and there you're supposed to wait for me. Jesus chose a specific place and it was a mountain now they eventually go to this mountain but before they do again let's see what John tells us in John 21 John 21 said in verse 1 after these things Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias now that does not sound like a mountain to me and um, John tells us here in this account that this is the third time that Jesus appears to them all right so in John chapter 21 we find the disciples not on the mountain that Jesus had said but on the sea not waiting for Jesus but trying to catch fish but not catching anything why because folks, disobedience always leads to failure. 
These guys had disobeyed Jesus. Jesus said, I want you to go to Galilee. I want you to go to a specific mountain. But instead, what do they do? They go fishing. They go to the sea to fish. Uh, Verse 3 tells us that they had no success. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And, and, and notice his words. In that night, they caught nothing. They caught nothing. It's obedience always leads to failure, folks. You know, many Christians have been called to preach. Many Christians have been called to uh, be pastors and, and, and missionaries. But they have disobeyed Jesus, and and, and then they turn around and wonder why nothing they ever do works out. You know, they can't seem to find success anywhere. Now, I understand not everybody is called to be a pastor. Not everybody is called to be a missionary. Not everybody is called to be, you know, a pastor's wife. I understand that. But many of you, who are listening have been called to serve. Many of you have been called to serve in the ministry. Many of you have been called to to preach. Many of you have been called to be pastors and missionaries. I want to tell you something. If you have disobeyed the command of God, your calling, if you have disobeyed God's calling, you are not going to find success anywhere. Why? Because you are being disobedient to God's command. So if that is you, why don't you try going to the mountain instead of going to the sea again and again? So the first thing that I want you to see then in this story is that disobedience leads to failure. The second thing that I want you to see in this account is this. Disobedience leads to a loss of relationship. Disobedience leads to a loss of relationship. Back in Matthew, when Jesus refers to the disciples, he calls them brethren. My brothers, he says. But here in, in John, in our text, notice what, how Jesus calls them in verse 5. It says, Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? Children. <laughs> he is not calling them brethren. No, you know, children, it's like saying, hey kids, hey guys, that's what he's saying. So it's not like when he appeared to them in the, in the room where they were gathered. It's not the same thing. Here, we see that he didn't even identify himself. It's as if there is no relationship between them. Isn't that interesting? You know, I want you to know something today is that God wants to have a close relationship with you. But listen, when you disobey, that relationship is lost. I remember when I was a kid, I when I disobeyed my mom, you know, we would argue and we would stop talking to each other. And, and listen, at that moment, our relationship, was damaged and for that relationship to be restored there had to be repentance and forgiveness it's the only way it's the only way that a relationship can be repaired when there is repentance and when there is forgiveness second chronicles 30 and verse 9 says For if ye return again unto the Lord, 
Your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that lead them captive, so that they shall come again into this land. Now listen to these words. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you. If, you see it's conditional, if ye return unto him. Folks, God wants to have this close and intimate relationship with us. But that relationship cannot continue if we are in sin, if we are disobeying God's word. So if we have disobeyed, and if that relationship between us and God has been damaged or has been broken, there is only one way to fix it, and that is we have to repent, and we have to seek God's forgiveness. Now, the Bible tells us here that He is gracious and merciful, and, and, and it says, and will not turn away His face from you, but then it's conditional. It says, you have to return to Him. You take the first step, and He's there waiting for us, wanting to fix that relationship and, and make it the way that it, that it was before. And so God is willing. The question is, are we willing to fix this relationship? And so we find then this truth in, our, in this account that disobedience leads to a loss of relationship. Number three, the third lesson that we find in this story is this. Leaders are held to a higher standard. Number three, leaders are held to a higher standard. Folks, we are all creations of God. And of course, everyone is important in God's kingdom. But listen, God has expectations of those of us who pursue leadership, especially within the church. By now you know that Peter was the leader of the disciples. And that's why whenever Jesus had something to say, he would always go to Peter first. In our text, we see Peter again deciding what the group should do. John Again, in our, back in our text, uh, John 21 and verse 2 says, They were together, Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee, that's John and James, and two other of his disciples. Now verse 3 again, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. And then they say unto him, We also go with thee. And so we find Peter here deciding what the group should do. Why? Because Peter was a leader. He says, I'm going to go fishing. I don't know if the Lord is really going to appear again. I don't want to wait anymore. You know, uh, I, I need to go back. I need to... Uh, do what I do best, which is fishing. And so he decides to go fishing, and, and all the others follow. Okay, And so, again, we find him here disobeying the command of our Lord Jesus, and the others are following. They're also being disobedient. Okay, The others followed, we are told here. And folks, listen, as leaders... We have to be extremely careful what we do and what we say because others will follow. When we backslide, it's not just us when we're leaders because there are others who are watching us and who are doing what we're doing. So when we backslide, others will also backslide. And here we see an illustration of this. This is true in church, but also in our homes as parents, because in our homes, 
As parents, we are the leaders. And remember that our children are watching. And when we disobey God in our homes, many times our children will do the same. We are not being the leaders that we're supposed to be when that happens, obviously. Luke chapter 12 and verse 48 tells us this truth that leaders are held to a higher standard. Luke 12 and verse 48 says, But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. Now listen to what it says after this. For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, speaking of leaders here, of him they will ask the more. As a leader, you are given much, much more responsibility than the followers. And so God is going to require more of us as leaders. And that's why, again, we have to be extremely, extremely careful what we do and what we say because people are watching us and people are following us. James chapter 3 and verse 1. James tells us here, he says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. He's saying, uh, you know, if, if uh, be careful if you become a teacher. Be careful if you become a leader in the church. Because, he says here, uh, if we mess up, <laughs> there will be greater punishment, greater condemnation. If we blow it, if we backslide, that could happen. We're going to have a greater condemnation, he calls it. So again, we have to be careful. Why? Because leaders are held to a higher standard. Okay? When it came time to rebuke and to make sure that he's on the right track, who do you think that Jesus went to? No, he didn't go to James. He didn't go to John. No, he went to Peter. Look again. In our text, uh, John 21, and verse 15, this time. So when they had dined, Jesus said to, not James, not John, he calls Peter. Okay? When they had dined, Jesus saith unto Simon, Peter. And he, then he calls him, uh, look, look how he calls him. He says, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these sounds like he's scolding him you know when remember when you were uh, a child and your mom called you by your entire name she said your first name your middle name and your last name and when you heard those uh, names when you heard that those words you knew that you were in trouble well here uh, peter is in trouble is being scolded by our Lord. And so again, when it comes time to rebuke, when it comes time to make sure that, you know, that the group is on the right track and that the group is going to do what, what, what the group's supposed to do, Jesus calls Peter and talks to him, okay? Make sure that everybody's listening. Now, Jesus asked Peter here three times. He asked him, Peter, do you love me? Why does he do it three times? Most of you already know that. It's because Peter denied Jesus three times. And so for every time that Peter denied him, Jesus asked him, Do you love me? Do you love me? Uh, verse 16 uh, Let's read 15 again. So when they had died, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? 
And when he says more than these, he's not talking about the other disciples. He's talking about the, the fish that they had caught. You love more than these fish. Because remember, the disobedience here is that they had gone fishing when they weren't supposed to. Now, there was nothing wrong with fishing. But it's the fact that Jesus had told them what to do, and it wasn't fishing. Jesus had given them specific instructions, and they weren't following them. Okay, uh, Many of you are doing things today that are not necessarily morally wrong, but the thing is that it, it's not what God has called you to do. That's the issue. And so that's what's happening here. Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? Uh, he saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Verse 16, He saith unto him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. In verse 17, he saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved, because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Three times, Jesus asked him, now, Jesus used the word agape for love here when he was asking him, Do you love me, Peter? Do you agape me? Well, agape is, many of you know that it's the highest form of love. But Peter answered with the word phileo, which means love but it's a lower degree of love it's like brotherly love and so it's like jesus is asking peter do you love me and peter replies yes lord i like you <laughs> that's not what jesus was looking for so the fourth thing that i want you to see in this account the fourth lesson is this the main thing for leaders is to feed sheep, to feed lambs. That is the main thing for leaders, to feed sheep. Jesus tells Peter here three times, Peter, feed my lambs. Peter, feed my sheep. In other words, he's saying, Peter, you are not a fisherman, you're a shepherd. And he's telling all of them the same things, not just Peter. All of those that were listening, the entire group, they had been called to be shepherds, no longer fishermen. Now, we know that Peter learned his lesson well. If you turn to 1 Peter chapter 5, the epistle that he wrote, in 1 Peter chapter 5, in verse 1, he wrote these words. And I'm pretty sure that when he wrote these words, he was remembering what took place this day on the shore of that sea of Siberia. Of Tiberius, rather. Um, verse 1. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder, he said, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Again, the same advice that he got from Jesus. Feed the flock. Jesus said, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. And he is saying the same thing here to other leaders. Feed the flock. That's 
uh, job number one. That's our priority as leaders, as shepherds, as pastors, as, as, as missionaries, as preachers. Feed the flock. Feed the sheep. That's what we should be doing. Which is among you, he says. Taking the oversight thereof. And then he says how this should be done. He says, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre. That means money. There's so many bad pastors out there and preachers. The only reason why they're doing what they're doing today is for money. Not because they love the Lord. Not because they love souls. But because they love money. And so he says it, it shouldn't be done for this reason. Not for filthy lucre. Not for money. But of a ready mind. Verse 3. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. But being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear. That's the Lord Jesus. He shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away if you're faithful to your calling and you feed those sheep the way that God has called you to do. Following these specific instructions here, there is a crown, Peter says. There is a crown waiting for you for everyone who is faithful to their calling. The main thing for leaders is to feed the sheep. Then we find an interesting prediction from Jesus. Back to our text in John 21. In verse 18, Jesus said this, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, When thou wast young, Peter, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee where thou wouldest not. And verse 19 tells us what all this means. John is helping us here. Verse 19 says, This fake key, signifying by what death he shall glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, follow me. That's an interesting prediction from Jesus. He's basically telling Peter that he would be killed by crucifixion one day. Many of you already know that Peter went to the cross just like our Lord Jesus. But when they were about to crucify him, he said, I am not worthy to die like my Lord. And so he asked to be crucified upside down. And that's how he gave his life for Jesus. But why tell him? Jesus told Peter how he would die, believe it or not, to encourage Peter. You see, Peter had been such a failure before men and before Jesus. Uh, that he needed encouragement here. You might say, but, but why tell him how he's going to die? I wouldn't want to know. Well, Jesus is telling him, Peter, from now on, you will not be a coward anymore. You're not going to deny me anymore. Peter, you will even die for me one day. You know what? That encouraged Peter. Peter would no longer be a failure. Peter would no longer be weak. Peter would no longer be a coward. He would go on to become a pillar in the New Testament church. And one day, he would lay down his life for him, just like Jesus said, no more denials. Believe it or not, that encouraged Peter. Now I love what Jesus tells Peter at the end when he asked about John, because if you keep reading this, we see that 
after Jesus said these words, um, Peter asked about John. He says, what about John? What's going to happen to him? <laughs> uh, look at what he says. Uh, verse 20. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved, followed, that's John, which also leaned on his breast at supper, just in case you have any doubts, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. So Peter is asking about John. What about this guy? What about John? How is he going to die? What's he going to do for you? And basically Jesus is telling him, you know, Peter, it's none of your business. Follow me. Follow me. I love that. <laughs> Folks, listen, in closing now, we should not be concerned what others around us are or are not doing for Jesus. We just have to follow Him. Just follow Jesus. Don't worry about what other people are doing or are not doing for Jesus. Worry about what you are doing for Jesus today. Jesus says, follow me. That is our greatest responsibility and the greatest command that Jesus has given us. To follow Him. No matter what, follow me, He says. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the lessons today. Thank you for this wonderful account. And thank you for the truths that we learned today. Now, Lord, I ask you, please continue to bless this series that we're almost done with. Uh, bless the, uh, the last lesson that we have next week. And please bless the new book that we're going to start pretty soon. Continue to bless everyone that is listening. Bless their families, dear Lord. And I do ask you all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May God bless you.